guys welcome back to the chat channel happy october halloween thanksgiving's around the corner christmas is around the corner the new year's around the corner lots of things are around the corner so for this month's project we're going to make a pot holder and we are going to make a pumpkin pot holder isn't this the cutest thing ever so um and in the video i'll show you i really wish this was just a little bit bigger but it still works just fine um and you'll see in the video as I go. I will have a download um, in the description box for you to print off and um, for the shape to get the pumpkin shape or if you already have one or whatever but you can see I put a little stem and this is a quilt as you go project so once you get to this point you're done. You can do some extra quilting on here if you wanted to but it's not necessary so all right, so let's get started. I'll go over um, the materials and everything that you're going to need, um, and we'll see if we can get this sewn up. Okay, so let's get started. So I'll have a link to download this um, in the description below. I did uh, make it just a little bit bigger because I couldn't get it to print out no bigger, but I wanted it just a little bit bigger. So um, this extra line here is one that... I went around and drew on there so you can cut it on either line but this is going to be our template after um, we get everything put together so you'll need i'm using insole bright but you can use just plain batting for this um, or a layer of batting and a layer of insole bright i'm just using the one and i've cut this at 11 by 11 inches it's a little big but i just wanted to make sure that i have some good coverage you know i want to make sure that um, once i Get everything sewn on there then my pumpkin template will work <laughs> and then i've got a bunch of different color orange strips um these are two by ten inches and i've also got some green strips that i'm going to use to make my stem these are two by four inches so i'm going to start with sewing these onto a couple of my orange strips so that i can make them the top and put them in the very center um, of our pot holder so let's get sewing so the first thing I need to do is add a couple of these to make the stem. I think two would be more than sufficient. I cut four, um, but I think two is going to be good. So I just need to pick a couple of strips here, and I'm going to stitch these to the very end. So right sides together, and we'll just use a quarter of an inch seam. So I'm just going to finger press these. You can go ahead and um, iron them if you want to. All right. So I've got my batting here. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can just kind of guess on it and um, just start in the very center and then work out. You could take your template on here and maybe take a pencil and just roll up the sides and make some marks. So that you know, or you could go ahead and cut this out. I'm just, just guesstimating because we are going to trim all of this down. So I know that's the stem and right there. Okay. So I've made some marks on here. So I know that this is the top part of the stem, which I'm going to put a T. Because if I don't, I'll forget. All right, that's the top. So I know that within these marks, these pencil marks, I've got to have my fabric. Okay. So that will be kind of helpful. Now I definitely know that I want these with the green in the center right here like this. So if you wanted to kind of plan this out a little bit, you could just lay your strips on here just to see what order you want them in. Make sure that you're going to get some good coverage um, and just give you a plan. So that will go there, and one more. So it looks like, for me, one, two, three, five strips, five two-inch strips will work great. And then when I put my template on there, yeah, perfect. Okay, so now I know. So I am going to stack these in the order that I want them to go on there. I'll turn that upside down there, and I better start my iron. Oh, sorry. 
I should have had that warming up already. Okay. So for my first strip, I'm within my lines there. I'm just going to lay it on there. I'm going to take my second strip, but where you can see it here. So I've got that on my line. So it's covering. So I've got plenty of coverage. My second strip is going to go right sides together on here. And I'm going to line up this inside edge because this is where I'm going to stitch. So if you've ever done quilt as you go, that's what this is going to be. So I'm just going to start at the top and go all the way down to the bottom. And the nice thing about quilt as you go, and especially the way we're doing this because we're trimming it out, you don't have to be like overly exact. I mean, just get a close. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to finger press that for right now. All right, so I've got that one finger pressed open. So my next strip is going to be one with my green. So I want my green to go here. So I'm going to lay this right sides together on this strip here. You can pin this if you want to, but you don't have to. And then we're just going to stitch all the way down. give it a good finger press. I have a, here we go. I thought I had a little seam. I don't know with that batting on there, that's going to be very good. All right, so then my next strip also has the green, so it goes right here. So now I'm going to line up these two seams right here where the greens are. All right, and then stitch this one down. And this is, we're just quilting it as we go here. I've never done a whole quilt as you go quilt. I wanted to, but what always stumps me is how they attach the blocks to each other. I just never could quite comprehend that, I guess you could say. <laughs> All right, and here's my next orange. So I'm going to, I might actually need one more orange, it looks like. I didn't account for the seam allowance. That's okay. I've got plenty. This would be a good scrap buster, too. Okay. Yep, I'm going to go ahead. My mark is right here, so I'm going to go ahead and add one more strip. Just in case. Let's see if I got anything different in here. Um, no, I think I'll just add one of these. Just to make sure I got plenty of coverage. I could scoop my template over a little, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. Just to make sure. So we got everything stitched onto here. You can see on the back it's all stitched down. So now all we need to do is press this because we want it good and flat. And then we're going to uh, put our template on here, mark it, and see if we can get it cut out. Okay, so I'm going to press this just so everything's good and flat. Okay. So get your paper scissors, don't use your good scissors, and go ahead and cut this. Now, if you want your cut holder be, to be bigger, you can go another quarter inch or half of an inch outside of that second drawn line. But that's actually pretty good for me. And I'm not, I'm not real concerned about all the little grooves and stuff in there because when you stitch this and sew it the way we're going to put it together, all that's going to be kind of lost anyway. But you just need to get the, you know, the basic shape. Which is what we're going to do. And if you have another template or you've come across another one, you can use the same thing on this. 
Um, you could use hearts. Any template that you wanted this quilt as you go method is perfect. Okay. So, I know I want my stem. So, my stem on the template is right about there. So, I folded that and I put that right there at those green. Okay. You can pin this if you want to pin it. Um, I am just going to take a pencil and just trace around on this so that I know where to cut. And again, it does not have to be like really perfect. Okay, so I know where to cut. So I'm going to get my good fabric scissors. And I am just going to trim this out. Now we're going to do a stitch and flip. I think it's called a stitch and flip. I do not like doing binding on these little tiny projects like this, especially ones with curves in them. Um, because then you have to have biased binding and all the things. And that's just not my thing. So we are going to stitch this on and then flip it. I think I need to come in a little more. extra okay there's my little pumpkin <laughs> she's so cute <laughs> um all right so now that you've got all that trimmed we need our background fabric and also let me show you how we're going to do the little hanger um to be able to hang this up so for the little hanger, I've got a two and a half by four inch uh, piece of fabric here. So I am going to put this with the wrong side up and I'm going to fold it in half, wrong sides together and make a crease. All right. And then I'm going to bring these edges into this little crease here and iron it just to hold it. Do the same thing on this other side. Then once I have those edges brought into the very center, I'm just going to fold it over on itself and give it a good press. Okay? So that's what it's going to look like. So when you start it, or when you open it up, you'll have like that. Okay? And then we are going to take this to the machine and stitch down both sides doing a top stitch. So just... <clears throat> right on the edge, about an eighth of an inch away from the very edge. I have got a stray thread being nutty on me. There we go. Okay, and you don't have to worry about the ends too much um, because we're going to fold this over and it's going to be um, all tucked in to our project. Okay, so for my backing fabric, I just cut, I don't know, that's like 10 by 10. Just as long as it's bigger than, let me scoot y'all back here, bigger than your project. So we're going to put our top of our pot holder face down. If you wanted to pin it, this would be a good time to pin it. We're going to stitch all the way around, but we are going to leave an opening right down here so um i am gonna make i don't think i'm gonna put pins in it but i am gonna make some marks here so i know and it's about three inches wide all right before we start stitching though we need to add our little tab in here so we're gonna fold it in half this is the fold part right here wherever you want this on your pumpkin you're going to put it in between, I'm going to put mine at the very top of the stem, all right, so it's in between the project, it's on the face front part of the project, and the backing fabric. And before I go any further, <laughs> I didn't want to edit all that out of there. 
you need your fabrics right sides together. I almost said this wrong. This is the wrong side. So, right sides together. Good lord. <laughs> Put your project down on there. All right. And then your little tab, you want to put it together. You want the good side, which is right here, to go in between. And it's wherever you want it to come out at on your project. Just be sure, like mine is right here. I'm going to stitch right along here, so I don't want to stitch that down onto that fabric. You know, I want to make sure that when I open this up, this is going to stick up straight. So if you wanted to just kind of offset it a little, however you wanted to do it, and just stick it down in there about an inch and a half or so. Mine comes, I think, right down into here somewhere. So I think I'll be good. I can have room to stitch on all those sides. All right. So now got my markings here. So I'm going to start here, go all the way around and stitch this. I'm going to use about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, just a little less. So like a scant quarter inch, you need to back stitch at the beginning and end. And then just stitch all the way around. These curves are very easy to do if you just go slow. Turn your project as you go. And it should be really easy to stitch those curves and get a nice smooth curve. If you don't and you find your fabrics bunching up, just lift your presser foot, turn it where you want it, and then set your presser foot back down and start stitching again. Okay, and then we're going to pivot right here for the stem. And pivot just a little bit more. Okay, now when you get to your loop, since that's where all the stress is going to happen, I, I would suggest going over it and then backstitching over it at least once, maybe twice. Just to added security. Alright, and then pivot this way. Come right back around to your other drawn line. Back stitch, and you're done. Okay, so now all we got to do is trim off this extra fabric here. And I'm just going to trim right close to our quilt as you go part of the project. because it, it don't have to be perfect. That's going to get all top stitched in anyway. So it will not matter. Let me come around this way here. Having trouble getting in that little nook. There we go. Alright, it's almost time for the moment of truth. How did we do? I really would like this to be a little bit bigger, but I think this would be okay. We'll see. I'll use it and see. So Go in between your two fabrics and just start turning it right side out. There we go. It takes a little bit to get through that hole, but once you do, it's not too bad. And then poke our little stem out. And just take your finger around here where the are, uh, seams are. Oh, that turned out really cute. Let me see if I can get that stem poked out a little bit more. It's not, like I said, it's not as big as I would have liked it. Because I like a big pot holder. But, you know, it would be easy to, like I said, it'd be easy to enlarge that. Um, your printer might have different settings where you could enlarge this. A little bit more so there it is so now all we got to do is stitch up this bottom and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and press this <laughs> so <cute. laughs> okay so if you'll stick your fingers in here and kind of pull your fabric should want to turn in 
right about where they should and I'm going to use the iron to press this down. Let me get that done. Okay, so I've got that um, with clips on it there. I had it took a little bit because of the batting and there's a little thick, so that's okay. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch. I mean, I'm sorry, eighth of an inch all the way around the edge and top stitch this entire thing. So you want to go around here, make sure your seams are rolled out and everything is where you want it. All right, and so I'm going to start here at our hole where our hole was. That way I can go ahead and get that closed up. Back stitching. When you start. And just go right around the edge. And again, on those corners, just take your time. Let the feed dogs pull it. You're just turning it. And we're going to do the stem. This turned out so cute. <laughs> I was just thinking, instead of a pot holder, you could stuff it and make a little stuffed pumpkin, like a little stuffed toy or a decoration. That'd be so cute. So cute. Okay. Any stray threads, and da -da -da, we have a little pot holder. I would really like it to be just a wee bit bigger. So I think um, on the next one that I do, I will either cut this template bigger or just when I cut it out, you know, cut it another half of an inch or so bigger. But it's still, I mean, it still fits your hand and you'd still be able to get, a, you know, hang on to something. So yeah, so cute. So there you go, our little pumpkin pot holder. So there we have it, you guys, our little pumpkin pot holder, quilt as you go. So cute. You could do a little extra quilting on this. I think I mentioned that at the beginning of the video, if you wanted to, but it's really not necessary. But the beauty of this, if it gets dirty or anything, just throw it in the washing machine, throw it in the dryer, and you're good to go. So, um, and like I said, I would like it to be a little bigger, but it's still, I think I'll use this. I think it's still um, super cute. So anyway, there's that for our October project uh peggy's quilting group on facebook if you want to come and join us there and hang out there we would love to have you and i hope you enjoyed this project i hope you guys have a fantastic halloween and i will see you next month for the november project i'm getting everything mixed up <laughs> all right have a great day guys